Welcome to another episode of China Update, where I provide you guys with the most up-to-date political, economic, and geostrategic analysis on the world's number two economy. My name is Tony. Let's jump in. Okay, happy Monday, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed your weekend and are now ready for another productive week. Over the weekend, on Saturday, the State Council's Joint Prevention and Control Mechanism held a press conference in Beijing, announcing that China will unswervingly adhere to its current COVID controls as the country faces increasingly serious outbreaks. The doubling down on zero COVID will be disappointing to many, including some of those investors who poured back into Chinese stocks last week based on rumors that an exit plan for the controversial policy would soon be announced. While disappointing, however, it should not be too surprising. In the lead up to, during, and after the recent 20th Party Congress, leadership and state media repeatedly signaled a commitment to zero COVID, despite the costs of doing so. And it seems Beijing has not let up on this position. At the Saturday press conference, an official at the National Health Commission's Disease Prevention and Control Bureau expressed, quote, "Previous practices have proven that our prevention and control plans and a series of strategic measures are completely correct. The policies are also the most economical and effective." End quote. The official added that the outbreaks across the country made sticking to the current policies important. Indeed, China, which, with the rest of the northern hemisphere, is moving into winter, is seeing cases continue to surge, with new daily cases in the thousands now. Over the weekend, China reported flare-ups in Guangdong in the south, Inner Mongolia in the north, Fujian on the southern coast, and Beijing, the capital. According to a note from Nomura last week, over 10% of China's economy is already in some form of lockdown, and this has likely risen over the last few days. In a statement yesterday, Sunday, U.S. technology giant Apple said that it has temporarily reduced iPhone 14 production because of COVID-19 restrictions at its primary iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max assembly plant in Zhengzhou, China. Apple said that the Foxconn factory, which we have been following these last two weeks, is operating at quote significantly reduced capacity. End quote. We remember last week that the local authorities ordered lockdowns in Zhengzhou, and this factory compound, home to over 200,000 assembly line and other workers, had already been wrestling with outbreaks. In a J.P. Morgan note on Sunday, analysts pointed out that the delays for Apple are now substantial. It currently takes 31 days to receive an iPhone 14 Pro if ordered from Apple's website, longer than the average two-day lead time for less expensive iPhone models. Meanwhile, with the Saturday news, investors may need to prepare for another volatile week of trading, which kicked off a few hours ago with the offshore yuan dropping 0.8 percent to 7.24 per dollar. However, share prices were up in Monday morning trading in Hong Kong. Though mainland markets in Shanghai and Shenzhen started down, signs and rumors of reopening, followed by official commitments to zero COVID, have certainly kept investors on their toes. Quote, "I expect there would be a reversal of the last week's gains, but I believe the stock markets are not likely to break the previous lows. The fact that rumors have spread is a positive sign that the Chinese government is internally discussing easing virus restrictions." End quote. In a note over the weekend, Goldman Sachs analysts are now not expecting reopening of the border until Q2 next year. Hey guys, if you like China Update, if you like what I'm trying to do with this channel, and you'd like to help me keep it sustainable, Patreon and Buy Me a Coffee links are in the description below. This is the best way to help me continue making these episodes every day for you guys and help keep the channel financially sustainable. If you're enjoying this video in particular, don't forget to hit that like button. And as always, thank you so much, everybody, for the ongoing support. Despite much European criticism at home, German Chancellor Scholz arrived in Beijing Friday for a two-day visit with a delegation of major German companies, making Scholz the first leader of a G7 country to visit China 
In the three years since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, the business delegation included the CEOs of Volkswagen, Deutsche Bank and Siemens, as well as representatives of BMW and sportwear maker Adidas, or Adidas. Meeting with Xi Jinping in the so-called Great Hall of the People, the General Secretary expressed that the two nations need to collaborate amid, quote, times of change and turmoil, end quote, and contribute more to global peace and development, according to state-run Xinhua. She continued that the two countries needed to uphold, quote, the principles of mutual respect, seeking common ground while reserving differences, carrying out exchanges and learning from each other, and win-win cooperation, end quote. Scholz's trip was a controversial move, with some European commentators arguing that it undermines Germany's hardening China strategy as well as European unity on China policy without receiving anything in return. The German Chancellor, anticipating the criticism, published a commentary with a popular German newspaper on the eve of the trip to justify the move. He expressed that, quote, We will seek cooperation where it lies in our mutual interest, but we will not ignore controversies. End quote. He adds, quote, When I travel to Beijing as German Chancellor, I do so also as a European. End quote. During the visit, some commentators expressed that, despite the business delegation, Schultz's visit is far more political and security driven, with Taiwan and Russia in discussions. Scholz also expressed that sanctions against EU lawmakers are unacceptable for Europeans, and that Xinjiang is not just an internal matter. Richard Walker, chief international editor at DW, Germany's global broadcaster, observed at a joint event with Scholz and Li Keqiang that the German chancellor was, quote, more outspoken than some might have expected. To my eyes, Li Keqiang looked less than happy as his comments went on, end quote, but added, quote, but then Li won't be around much longer, end quote. On Saturday, Schultz and Xi made a joint statement opposing the use of nuclear weapons in Ukraine. Speaking to Chinese financial media, EU Chamber of Commerce in China's outspoken president expressed that on the business side, the focus would have been on new investment opportunities in three sectors in China, chemical, automobile and machinery. During the visit, for example, China Aviation Suppliers Holdings signed a purchase agreement with Airbus for 140 planes with a total value of approximately 17 billion US dollars. Last month, Schultz's government okayed China's Costco Shipping Ports Limited's controversial investment into a container terminal at the port in Hamburg. We remember back in September, research from US-based Rhodium Group showed that Germany is the leading European investor into China, 43% of total European direct investment. As such, and combined with the German export reliance on the Chinese market, China was Germany's largest trading partner for six consecutive years from 2016 to 2021, corporate Germany has a massive interest in preventing China decoupling and in not rocking the boat of EU-China relations. Okay, over the next few days we are going to be getting a lot of new economic data, so the next few episodes will be very economics heavy. But for now, that is today's episode of China Update. Thank you so much everybody for watching, and I will see you all tomorrow.